In this video, I want to dive a little bit deeper into the moving average model in time series analysis. More specifically, I want to figure out if, given some random time series, x sub t, if it's a good candidate to be modeled by the moving average model, and if it is, then should we use a moving average 1 using just one error in the previous time period? Moving average 2, do we need two errors from two previous time periods? Or MAQ in general, how do we know what's the right moving average model? Well, let's go ahead and get started. Let's pretend that x sub t is indeed generated by a moving average q process. So that is x sub t is equal to some kind of mu plus phi sub 1, the error from the previous time period, phi sub 2, the error from the previous two previous time periods, all the way to phi sub q times the error from q time periods ago, plus, of course, the error from the current time period. That's always going to be there, right? So let's say that the data generating process for our time series x sub t is indeed this moving average q process. How can we pick up on this? So if we can figure out how to pick up on this, we can figure out how to pick up on it for a time series in the wild, right? Well, let's look at our good old friend, the ACF or autocorrelation function. Remember that we've already seen that to figure out the order of a autoregressive model, we would be using PACF. So it turns out that to figure out the order of a MA model, we'll be using ACF. Let's prove to ourselves that that's true. What happens if we take the correlation between x sub t and x sub t minus k, which is just the same time series uh, offset shifted by a factor, a lag of k, okay? And remember, this is exactly the ACF with lag k, okay? So what happens when we compute the ACF at lag k? Using the definition of the Co uh, the covariance between two different things, we see that this is going to be expected value of xt times xt minus k minus expected value of xt times expected value of xt minus k. And I actually made a slight mistake here. This uh, whole term we've seen here is actually the covariance. The correlation would be if we took this and divided it by the square root of the variance of x of t and the square root of the variance of x of t minus k. But for the purposes of this video, all we want to see is whether or not this ACF is zero. So it'll be sufficient to figure out whether the numerator is zero. So this equal is not actually equal. It's, uh, we'll just say about equal something. Uh, it's just the numerator. Okay. So it turns out that this expected value of X of T is what? If we put expected value on this side and expected value of all the stuff on this side, we're going to get mu. The expected value of the error is going to be zero, right? Because the error is always centered around zero. This is centered around zero, this is centered around zero, this is zero. So it turns out the expected value of both of these is mu and mu. So we get mu squared. Okay, the more interesting piece is going to be in this expected value of x sub t times, expected, uh, times x sub t minus k. What kind of terms do we get in x sub t? Well, we can just look at them from the equation written at the top of this page. We have a error t minus one term right here. We have an error t minus 2 term right here. We have an error t minus q term right here. And we have just a simple error at time period t term right here. So these are all the different kind of error terms, error lag terms we get in x sub t. What kind of error terms do we get in x sub t minus k? Well, it's pretty easy. Just take each of these and substitute t for t minus k. And we get all the error terms in this different time series, x sub t minus k, which is just x sub t shifted by a factor of k. Now, what I'm really interested in is when is uh, this expected value going to be equal to zero? Well, that's going to happen if when we do a multiplication of these two time series right here, when we do that, we're going to do a multiplication of each of these terms with each of the other terms. So you can pretend like you're drawing a line between all of them. And we only get zero if every single expected value uh, multiplication product is going to be equal to zero. So for example, one term we might get is expected value of e t minus one times e t minus two, right? That would happen if we had t minus one here and if there's a t minus two down here, for example. This is going to be zero because remember, error from time period one, uh, one time period ago, error from time period two ago is independent of each other. Therefore, this is going to be equal to zero. The only terms that could potentially not be zero are the ones which look like expected value, sorry, I'm all over the page here, expected value of error t minus one squared. And it's possible to get these terms only if that factor occurs in 
this numerator, uh, this top list, and this bottom list. Then we'll get a cross multiplication. If this factor does not appear in both, then we will not get this term. And indeed, this expected value of error t minus 1 squared is not going to be equal to 0. How do we know it's not going to be equal to 0? Well, uh, the variance of expected value of the error t, uh, sorry, the variance of error t is going to be, by definition of variance, error t squared minus expected value of error t squared. What is expected value of error t? 0. So this is 0 which means that this quantity, expected value of error t squared, which is exactly the quantity we wrote up here, just minus one, but it's gonna be the same thing, is equal to the variance of expected value of t, of the error of t, my bad. And therefore it's not zero since the variance is not zero. So anytime we have a factor like this in this cross multiplication, then we are not going to get zero as our ACF for these two lags right here. And when would that happen? Well, notice this is counting down. It goes from t, t minus 1, t minus 2, all the way to t minus q. This also counts down. t minus k, t minus k minus 1, t minus k minus 2, all the way to t minus k minus q right here. So the only way possible to get no such terms like this, where we have something squared, is if this list of errors and this list of errors have no overlapping lags. And that would only happen if and only if t minus q which is basically the final error here, is less than or equal to t minus k, which is the first error here, which means that there's no place where these two lists overlap. And if this is true, an implication, basically you just remove the t's and flip the signs, is that k is less than or equal to q. What that says, uh, going back to the beginning, is that the autocorrelation between our time series and our time series shifted k periods uh, in the past is going to be not equal to zero if and only if that k period in the past is less than or equal to q, which is the generating order of our moving average model in the first place. Okay, so that means since it's an if and only if, that means that if it's the opposite condition, aka k is greater than q, then we are going to get zeros for all of our autocorrelation functions. That was a lot of equations. Let's look at some graph here. So the ACF here, the ACF will look like this. Uh, for example, the first one, the lag ACF1, will not be zero. Why is it not going to be equal to zero? Well, it would only be zero if one was greater than our Q. Let's say it's not because Q is over here, right? And two, again, is not going to be equal to zero. Three, maybe it's negative, but it's not going to be equal to zero. And these are all going to be above zero uh, or far away from zero until we get to lag Q. And lag q even is going to be different from zero because q is less than or equal to q. But as soon as we get to q plus one, these are going to be exactly zero. The next one is exactly zero. This one is next one is exactly zero. So uh, this may have been a little bit complicated, but in the end, we figured out that we can figure out that a time series is well modeled by a MAQ model if we look at its ACF, its autocorrelation function, and we find out that the ACF shuts off is zero after some lag Q. And that tells us that it's a good fit for a MAQ model. Okay, so that is basically what this video is telling us. Use ACF to figure out if something is a moving average model and check if it's shutting off after some value Q in the plot. And that tells you it's a MAQ model, okay? So until next time.